Do you have employees? Yes. Do you operate your business as a corporation or a partnership? Do you f file any of these tax returns, employment, excise, or alcohol, tobacco, and firearms? Do you withhold taxes on income other than wages paid to a non-resident alien? Do you have a KEO plan? Are you involved with any of the following types of organizations? Trusts, estates, real estate, mortgage, investment, nonprofit, farmers, cooperatives, or plan administrators. So it's do you operate your business as a corporation or partnership? There we go, right? Do you operate your business as a corporation or partnership? So now there are two types of evidence the courts are not the de jure republic courts. They are not the constitutionally required common law court of record. And two, they are a public agency private business and not the judiciary of the state. And their employees, i.e. judges and chief clerks, are not lawfully in their offices. The codes they are using were not lawfully enacted and only apply if we consent to them. Everything that goes on in court is, let's make a deal. Contract law. Do you understand the charges? When they ask you, you say yes. Now you agreed to contract or, quote, stand under the authority of the, ju of the judge in the court. Every time you sign anything without qualifying your signature, you retain your rights you contracted. Or if you don't qualify your signature without prejudice or all rights reserved or something along those lines, you waive your rights. So you have to claim your rights first. You have to stand there and say, I claim all my unalienable rights. Giving the judge your name engages in contract with the court, so don't do it. Quote, I go by the name John. You may address me as John or, quote, I am the authorized representative of the all capital letter name defendant John Doe in all capital letters and you may address me as friend. When they call you Mr. Doe, respond by, quote, by what authority are you addressing me by that name? Thank you, George. It will always be a struggle for power, and the judges are masters of word art. They're using legalese, not English. I mean, the law society, a society that you don't belong to, created a separate code set of words that sounds like English, but it isn't. And they are great at deception, and they are master salesmen, getting you to give up your position because of fear. And they will finally resort to threats of contempt of court and jail time for being disruptive, when in fact they are trespassing on your rights and de demeaning you with their actions without any authority to do so. The very definition of criminal behavior. Look at the file, quote, initial arrest confrontation in, quote, case law in the court CD to see a lot of penal code and vehicle code that they violate when they arrest you. First thing I would do would be to file a conditional acceptance of the charges. I mean, the charges. Think about it. Uh, that's a bill, right? I mean, who gives you charges? It's, a, it's all money. Then I would go down and get a, so you want to do a debt validation. Then I would get a copy of the docket at the clerk of the court's office. It's, they charge you 50 cents a page. So if you're charged with something, if you go to the clerk of the court, if it's criminal, you go to the criminal, and if it's civil, you go to the civil, and you ask for a copy of the docket. The docket is the record. The docket is, you know, a, a timeline of what's been entered into the clerk of the court's office. So if the original complaint was filed on June 2nd, then the docket will show June 2nd, original complaint filed. And it might have a minor amount of information if you've uh, attended court already and you've had a hearing, oftentimes they'll note who the judge is, the name of the judge, who the prosecutor is, or who the attorney for the opposite side is, if it was civil. And then they'll have some 
minor notations about what went on in there, but it's not a transcript. It doesn't have word by word what's done. It just has the significant legal parts, like if you, ob if you objected to something, they might note that you objected to jurisdiction or you objected to the attorney representing the other side. And after 15 days have elapsed from the arrest in a criminal case, you want to see if the complaint's been filed. It has to be file stamped within 15 days or there's no case. Then you have the arraignment. And under Penal Code 988, we have, this is a California definition, you can look up federal rules of criminal procedure and have criminal uh, federal rules which would also apply. But Penal Code 988 says, the arraignment must be made by the court or by the clerk or the prosecuting attorney under its direction. Well, wait a minute, have you ever been in a court and watched an arraignment? The judge does it all. How do you plead? You've been charged with this, how do you plead? Have you ever seen the prosecuting attorney tell you that you've been charged with this? Nope. The clerk of the court? Nope. So where, where in here does it say the judge gets to do the arraignment? And consists in reading the accusatory pleading. Well, they never do that. I'm going to show you an accusatory pleading the complaint to the defendant and delivering to the defendant a true copy thereof. Another thing they never do. They never deliver a true copy of the complaint and of the endorsements thereon. Now why is that important? Because legally before you can be arrested, if you, if you don't have a warrant for your arrest that has, was handed down by the grand jury, or a judge signed a warrant for your arrest based upon probable cause that some officer came to him and said they had, uh, they had enough information to say that you violated the law, then you had a warrantless arrest. And if you have a warrantless arrest, you're supposed to be taken before the magistrate immediately and the magistrate has to hear the issue presented to him by the policeman or the policeman took notation that one of the, your neighbors made a sworn statement to him. And then the uh, magistrate is supposed to endorse the complaint. His signed endorsement on the complaint is what makes the arrest valid. If any, okay, and the endorsements thereon, if any, including the list of witnesses, and asking the defendant whether the defendant pleads guilty or not guilty to the accusatory pleading provided, and where the accusatory pleading is a complaint charging a misdemeanor, a copy of the same need not be delivered to any defendant unless requested by the defendant. So I'm going to tell you straight up, you better ask for a copy of the complaint. Now we're going to look at a complaint. Okay, here's a copy of the complaint, and this is uh, Superior Court of California County Sonoma. You'll, you'll notice at the top here, it's got Everything's in capital letters, okay? Your straw man is the one who's being charged, not you, right? Because it's always all caps. And then here's what the complaint is. So it'll show you, you know, what it is that they're accusing you of, the numbers and whatnot. And it usually have a case number up there. And then it's going to say notice. And then you read all this. Do they read all this into the record ever? No, they just tell you what you're being charged with uh, a violation of the um, uh, vehicle code in this case. Do they, I mean, they just tell you that what you're being, so if it says that you have to, it has to be, the complaint has to be read into the record and when they handed you this, this is the complaint that they handed you, right? Do they ever read the whole thing? No, they never read the whole thing. So there's never been an actual reading of the complaint. Then we go and we look and here we say, the undersigned. Now, do you notice anything funny about the way they say that there? The way they represent it there? It's not like their, uh, their word processor doesn't do upper and lowercase, does it? Do you see upper and lowercase on this complaint everywhere? It's not like the whole thing's in uppercase, so it, it can't be done in lowercase. So why do they say the undersigned in all capital letters? 
They want you to be aware that the undersigned there is a corporation. It's a fictional entity. If it's not a corporation, it's a fictional entity because only fictional entities are all uppercase.